Good evening, class. My name is Marcia Land, and I will be your moderator for this evening's class. To all Zoom participants, please mute your mics and block your cameras. Thank you. Welcome to another lecture given by the Charlotte, North Carolina Zoom class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Charlotte, North Carolina Zoom class was established in August of 2020. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and father of the name and title of the father, the word or son, and the Holy Spirit which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was their letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible rendering of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud, has, excuse me, because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, 
and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh, excuse me, Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our primary constitution, objectives, and aims of the Bible class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without the distinction of race or nationality, creed, sect, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. A, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We will begin class with the prayer given by Dr. Jennifer Marshall. And we will have the scripture lesson given by Katonia Parks. And the scripture lesson will be Ephesians, the second chapter. Dr. Marshall. Good evening. Good evening. We thank Yashua for bringing us to another class so that we may be strengthened in the truth and that we should know our brethren and love them and hold each other's arms up and that we pray that he keeps us coming and to know more as much as we need to know. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Good evening, class. Good evening. For the scripture lesson, I'll be reading Ephesians, the second chapter. One of my favorites. <laughs> and I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, uh, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, and revised by A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research, the Scripture Research Association, and Incorporated. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. 
um, Ephesians, the second chapter. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our deportment in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But Yahweh, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together by the Messiah. By grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua the Messiah. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Yahshua the Messiah. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of Yahweh, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Yahshua the Messiah, unto good works, which Yahweh hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past heathens in the flesh, who called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time you were without the Messiah, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without Elohim in the world. But now in Yahshua, the Messiah, ye who formerly were far off are made not by the blood of the Messiah. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinance for to make it himself a twain, one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both unto Yahweh in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the sons and of the household of Yahweh and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahshua the Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone and whom all the building fitly framed together growth into a holy temple unto Elohim and whom ye also are built together for a habitation of Elohim through the spirit. So that was Ephesians, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Jennifer Marshall, for the uh, prayer and the Florida Choir for the song and Dr. Katonia Parks for the scripture. Before I call on our first speaker, tonight our readers will be Dr. Hanifa Allen and Dr. Katonia Parks. And to our speakers, we will have a three speaker format tonight and a sign will appear on the screen to let you know you have five minutes remaining of your allotted time. Please acknowledge that you have seen the sign. Thank you. We will also would like to thank uh, our returning visitor, Dr. Pamela Powell for coming back to study with us. And for our first vessel, we would like to call on Dr. Chuck Marshall from our Tampa, Florida class. Dr. Marshall. Thank you. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor just to be able to sit in one of these classes and to be able to hear the truth that's about to be preached. It's also just a, a, an honor to be able to explain, hopefully, plainly, some of the things that I have learned since I came down here. And this is not an overnight process. 
I've been in class for many, many, many years, still learning, still excited about the gospel, because this is the truth. And I was around a little bit, a few religions, if you will, before I came down here. And I was not satisfied with anything and asked many questions, couldn't get any answers. It wasn't until I was drawn down here to this class by the creator himself, which we are all drawn down here. We are none of us down here on volition of our own or because of anything that we have done, any how great we were or bad we were or anything like that. Yahshua has graced us with this knowledge, and we thank him for that. Now, here Paul in Ephesians is writing to the Ephesians, and this is a class. And like I said, this is not an overnight thing. Right. Now, you're going to find that Paul had to write many letters, Colossians and the Ephesians and so on and so on, Galatians because they all had problems and all had to be straightened out in what they thought. This, I remember when I was in Christianity, I used to think that, well, once you got the Holy Spirit, you got it and boy, everything's great. And you you know, you know, you know everything and uh, you can't be deceived and all that. Well, if you've got the Holy Spirit, you can't, but this is not an overnight deal. And, he was dealing with these different schools and trying to get them to understand the truth about the gospel because they, like us, they brought in their theories, their concepts, and their opinions. And they had to be straightened out, just like we had to be straightened out. So that's the context behind what this is. These are letters that was written to the different schools. So in the first in the first chapter, he's talking about how that we were chosen. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, before I get into the second chapter, let's get that. Let's go uh, one and verse four, if you would please. Ephesians one and four, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. You know, we were chosen. Boy, this concept was completely foreign to me before I came in here. Didn't didn't understand. Didn't know nothing about Yahweh. Even though I had been to many churches, I had taken a little bit here and a little bit there from this church, a little bit from that church, and I had Chuck religion. It was the religion of Chuck. And when I came in here, this religion of Chuck had to be completely torn down. And once I started hearing this, I finally started seeing and getting the answers and not understanding that I was even chosen before the foundations of the world. Esau, he loved. Uh, Ishmael, he hated. You understand? That is hard to understand. And that is hard, especially in, in, in Christianity, we just passed over those things. And here in this, we passed over this too, because he has chosen us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame. Chuck didn't have nothing to do with it. It's Yahweh. We say we want to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahshua and to Yahweh, but yet we want to take credit for understanding some of this gospel. Well, if you're taking credit if you're taking credit for understanding some of this gospel, you're taking some glory and honor away from Yahshua. This was before, you understand, before the foundations. Now, could we get to, uh, we'll start right at two, uh, verse one in uh, chapter two, if you would, please. Ephesians 2 and 1, and you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. See, that was us before we came down to this class. We were dead. We didn't understand. We didn't even understand what the difference between life and death was. When we thought of death, we thought of physical. That's the only thing we thought of when we came down here. Sometimes we thought we were spiritual, 
But after coming down here, we understand that everything we understood, everything we looked at was from a physical standpoint, didn't understand anything about spirit or spiritual things. And we were dead because we did not know our creator. Uh, get me, uh, what is it, John 17, 3, please, if you would. John 17, and you want me to start at 1 or at, at 3? Please. Okay, John 17 and 1. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. See, he is the one giving the eternal life. It isn't me. It isn't me doing anything. It's him giving us eternal life. And he's doing that because this was the will of the father. The father had Yahweh, had this whole thing all planned out right from the very beginning. And now then Yahshua is coming in and carrying it out, fulfilling it, if you will, and bringing us in because we are the fruits of the spirit. And he's going to take us back to the father. These, this is totally, totally, you understand, uh, beyond the scope of my thinking, I'll put it to, to like that, my thinking before I came down here. Read. And this is life eternal, that they might know that thou only are the true El and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. So eternal life is to know. You have to know Yahweh and his son Yahshua as they truthfully are and exist. And that's what we're down here for. That's why this is a school and this is not a church. We are here to learn of our creator and to inherit eternal life. Could you read the next verse, please? Uh, in uh, Ephesians uh, 2 and uh, I think 2. Ephesians 2 and 2. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now they're talking about Satan here. You see, Satan is the prince and the power of the air, and he's the spirit that is now working in this earth plane tonight. In Revelations, it says that he has deceived the whole world. It didn't say part of the world, it didn't say most of the world. It deceived the whole world. That's why when, when we, we came down here, we were deceived. Because it's the whole world. And he has graced us by ha having us be present in these classes so that we can come into a profound knowledge of Yahshua the Messiah and his father Yahweh. That's the whole reason. That's... I can remember back in the old days, it used to be the song, what's this all about, Alfie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and we used to, you know, we used, and we used to go around, you know, before we came in, what's this all about? What the heck am I doing here? Why am I even alive? What's this all? That's what we're finding out by coming down to these classes. We're finding out what it's all about. And that is a privilege and an honor. The next verse, please. Third verse among whom also we all had our deportment in times past and the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. I can remember before I came into class, I thought this was all talking about sex and, and lust and that kind of stuff, you understand, because that's the way they programmed us. There's more than just that as far as lust. And look at the world today. You can see it. What is the biggest lust in the world today? It's power. Mm -hmm. Power for, and money. And money brings power and power brings money. And that's the reason the United States is in the problem it's in tonight. That's the reason the world. You look around the world right now. This is not just happening here. Look at Israel. 
Dr. Kinley always said, keep your eye on the Middle East. And what's going on in the Middle East right now, and what's going on particularly in Israel, you see, with the political upheaval they have there, and they're trying to make it into more of a dictatorship than a democracy, it's going around, that problem is all over the world. And then Yahweh is bringing on heat, heat that, the, that, that we have never seen before, for days on end, fires, it's just burning the earth. And the more fires that we have, the more pollution is going into the earth plane, going into the, you know, the skies. And then you have floods, floods all over Greece, Italy, United States. It's even New York City was flooded. It's all over. The reason is Yahweh is trying to show us that we have but a short time. He's turning, if you will, he's turning up the heat. This is no game. We're not here playing. We're not playing church. We're not playing, you know, this is serious. This is life and death. And that's why this is so important. And it's important to get these things across. And I wish I was better at getting things across. But I am what I am. And I hope that uh, somebody can get something out of this. Read on, please. Fourth verse. But uh, Yahweh. Be... Yes. But Yahweh, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. See, now he has great love for us. And that's the reason why he's down here. Read on, please. Even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together with the Messiah. By grace, you are saved. Now he has quickened us. See, we, we were dead in our sins. And he hath quickened us. To, together with the Messiah by the and here's the thing of it and this is this is something that is is just fantastic you are saved by grace there is nothing you can do right you understand I was taught when I went to school that Moses that Abraham and all of those boys back there had faith and what I was taught was that they had blind faith, blind belief. There was a musical group called Blind Faith at one time. They didn't last very long. But blind faith, not understanding. You see, when Moses was about to go down to Egypt to deliver that name of Yahweh. Now, why was he delivering that name Yahweh? And why was he given the name at that time? Because Yahweh was showing forth salvation with his name. Moses was to go down into Egypt with that name of Yahweh, which the world has roundly rejected. And which I've noticed lately that a lot of ministers on TV are admitting that it's the name Yahweh. But they still go back and use Lord and God and Jesus Christ, even though they admit that is the right names. It's like a dog returning to its vomit. You sit there and you admit it and then won't use it. And Moses was given that name at that time to show forth deliverance or salvation. And he took that name down and that name was proclaimed throughout all the earth. Now, here's the one thing in the uh, third chapter of, of Exodus that Yahweh tells Moses, uh, that he would be with him. Moses was not alone and by himself and doing all that. Mo Moses had Yahshua, or as the world knows, Yahshua, uh, Joshua, but it was actually Yahshua, there with him, instructing him what to do and how to do. Just like today, we have Yahshua with us. Well, not just with us, he's in us to direct us and to guide us. Just like Paul was doing here, instructing the Ephesians, you see, and trying to get them to understand the plan and the purpose of Yahweh. And what he's doing here is he's showing them what they came out of, the ignorance that they came, came out of. Just like we can look back and look at the ignorance that we came out of. And here is Yahweh, okay, in us, instructing us. 
that's the glory of this whole thing. Without Yahshua, we would be nothing. We would be out in the world. Could you read the next verse, if you would, please? Six verse. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua, the Messiah. Okay, where are you at? Uh, what verse are you at? I'm sorry. This is a sixth verse. You want me to read it again? Yes, if you would, please. Ephesians 2 and 6. And oh. half. Okay, I, no wonder. I was looking in three. <laughs> okay, go on ahead. <laughs> and half raised us up together <laughs> and made us sit together in heavenly places. In he, he's raising us all up together. That's why we're coming to class. And we're sitting in heavenly places. In other words, our thought, our mind is being elevated. And we're now receiving the same mind that is in Yahshua. And that's right. the reason why, you see, we are becoming Yahshua. We are being, we are born again. Chuck is dying. Chuck is dead. What is happening? I'm being quickened. I'm being raised. I'm being re-educated. I'm being re-everything to think different. I don't think the way I used to think. I don't do what I used to do. You don't, I'll put it to you like this. You don't have to give, teach me Ten Commandment morality. You don't have to go back and teach me the law to try to get me to do it. Now we go back and we look at the law because we're looking back there at the examples. We're looking back there at the shadow of heavenly things and we're learning from that. But if I have, if you have Yahshua in you, I don't have to preach morality to you because Yahshua within you is going to take care of that. But if you don't have Yahshua in you, I can preach morality to you till I'm blue in the face and it won't do a damn bit of good. And you can look at the world out here and you can see that that is true. Because now we're leaving these carnal ordinances, as you see there, we're leaving these carnal ordinances because they've been nailed to the cross because Yahshua, oh, there's just so much. Yahshua has came in and he has fulfilled that Old Testament. Now we go back to the Old Testament, we go back to the law, we go back to the prophets, because this is our measuring rod. Yahweh is always having the children of Israel take the measuring rod and measuring things. And this is our measuring rod, the law, the prophets, and the tabernacle pattern, that we can look back and I can see if somebody's telling me the truth or not. Now there's a lot of stuff going around right now, and that, well, Dr. Kinley said, Dr. Kinley said this, Dr. Kinley said that. Well, good. And I have nothing wrong with saying that Dr. Kinley said, but you can't go by what Dr. Kinley said just because he said it. And even he said, make me prove it. Right. And that's the reason why he gave us the law. He gave us the prophets. He gave us the tabernacle is so that with Yahshua within you, guiding you, you can use that as your measuring rod to understand what is true and what is not true. You can take, we can take the Bible and we can get into the Bible and we can say what is true and what is not true and go back and we can prove what we're saying. It's not no more of this as when I went to church. Believe me, brother, I've been sent by God. We don't do that. Dr. Kinley wasn't like that either. Like I say, I have nothing wrong with people saying Dr. Kinley said, but if you're trying to prove a point, you can use that, but you've got to go back into the law. You've got to go back into the prophets and you've got to take and back up your point. Otherwise, we can be deceived. Dr. Kinley also said that they say, I said that. And he said, yes, I did say that, but I didn't say that. And other words, people can take his words and not understand what he was talking about. But if you take those words and you go back into the law and you go back into the prophets and you take and you use the tabernacle and you use these things to prove what you're saying, then you see, then you can't get messed up. You can't be deceived. With Yahshua in you, that's what you do. It's the whole thing here is Yahshua in us, teaching us, 
bringing us out of our ignorance that we were in. And still to this day, I am still being brought out of my ignorance. I am not, I got a long way to go. We've all got a long way to go. The way I look at what we're doing right now is kind of like pre-kindergarten. We like to think we know so much. But <laughs> when you look at Yahweh's plan and purpose and look at the greatness and you look and you start looking into the science and seeing how this whole thing is held together and see how the whole thing works and see the complexity of everything. And then you take and you look at what you understand and what you know, it, it, it takes the big head away from you because you understand that we're just, we're, we're, we're what, and uh, I, they didn't have kindergarten when I went to school. That's how old I am. But I'll put it like this. When they had kindergarten, what they have you do, they have you go, they had you go out and play in the sandbox and learn how to get along with the kids. They'd give you blocks to learn, you know, what, this is one block, this is two blocks. You see, it was very simple. It was very basic. And what we're do down here is very simple and very basic. You see, we've got to stay that way because you have a bunch of dummies sitting here like me, you understand, that has a hard time understanding things. But thanks to Yahweh, he has opened up my heart. He has opened up my mind. He's opened up your heart. He's opened up your mind so that we can understand these things. All credit, glory, and honor go to him. Could you read on? Okay, uh, seventh verse, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Yahshua the Messiah. You see, or by, oh, oh, go ahead. For by grace you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of Yahweh. Right. You see, we are going, this is the great thing. We are going to go on in ages to come, ever learning of him throughout eternity. Can you imagine no longer than I've been on this earth plane, you know, and eternity? You can see now why I'm saying this is like pre-kindergarten. And what I used to look at of being saved, my idea of being saved, Chuck was going to be saved. The uh, Jesus was going to clean me up, but I, I was Chuck and I was, Chuck was going to be saved. Chuck ain't going to be saved. It's the spirit. It's the soul within Chuck that's going to be saved. And that soul is being cleansed. That soul is, is that old Chuck is dead, is dying. The new Chuck, the new mind, the new heart. I did not know how to love before I came down to these, this class. We didn't, none of us know how to love before we came down to this class. You see, we didn't know anything before we came down to this class. And that's what we're here for. That in the ages to come, we're going to know his exceeding rich, riches of his grace. Boy, oh boy. That's this, that now the see, that's an, enough to look forward to. Dr. Kinley said that if, if you could just get a crack, just look through the fence, through a knothole in a fence and see what was to come. You'd do anything it took to go on into the next age. That's how exciting this is. And because we're getting just a little glimpse of that, that is the, that's the excitement that we have today. This is still exciting. This is still energizing. And this is still the only thing in this earth plane that is worth pursuing. Everything else is dead. It's, it's dead works. It's useless. Perhaps it's because I'm becoming an old man now. And I'm not, so I'm not as attached to this earth plane. It's, and I feel, I feel sorry and I feel bad for people in this class that still have to work. See, I'm retired. They still have to work. They still have to feed and scratch, you know, to feed their families. And it's, it's hard not to get wrapped up in this earth plane. It is hard to keep your mind on Yahshua. But through the grace of Yahshua, and Yahshua be in you, you will get through. And we will learn. And we learn from this. We, you take iron. You dig iron out of the ground. That iron, you just don't take and dig it up and then uh, there it is. You know, it, 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 has to be it has to be smeltered. It has to be heated up. 
It has to be hauled to a smeltering factory and, and heat it up. It has to have the heat put to it. And then they take it and they melt it and then they pour it, you see, and that's just iron. But to now to make that iron into steel, into something that's really strong and you can sharpen, will hold an edge, you have to take and you have to heat it up and cool it down, heat it up and cool it down. You have to take a hammer or a forge and you have to beat it to take and make that steel, to, that iron ore into steel. And it's through a heat and cooling process. And that's what we're going through here. We're going through trials, tribulations, but we can trust in Yahshua. Now, before, before I came into class, I used to sweat all these things and I used to get all upset about everything and oh my God. But now with Yahshua in me, with an understanding, I can look around and, and even see what's going on in the world today and understand that I have Yahshua and Yahshua has got my back and Yahshua is going to take care of me. And he's done that and he's proven it to me through the experiences that I am going through in my life, the same that you're going through with the experiences in your life. My experiences are no better than your experiences, you understand, or anything like that are worse than your experiences. You're experiencing what you're experiencing, so that's the worst for you. That's what this is all about. We're in this together. And just like Moses, when the children of Israel were fighting to go into Canaan's land, he stood there. And as long as he had his arms lifted up, you understand, the children of Israel prevailed. As long as we, we're looking, we're looking forward to getting out of here. We're looking forward to Canaan's land. Now, remember, two of the tribes inherited on this side of the Jordan. But those two tribes had to go over on the other side and help the rest of the tribes of Israel fight the fight. We are in Canaan's land now, but we're going across the River Jordan now into Canaan's land, and we're having to fight to fight. But or even though we are in, technically, we are in Canaan's land, in our mind, that's how beautiful this is. And that's how th we can see the difference between what we were and what we are now. Could you read the next verse, please? I hope so. I hope I'm getting uh, something uh, across to somebody because I, I find this I find this gospel so beautiful. Yes, I find this teaching so fantastic, and I just find myself at loss of words to explain something as magnificent and something as 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 good as this teaching is. So thank you. Bear with me. Next uh, oh, verse. It's beautiful. Okay. Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Yahshua the Messiah, unto good works, which Yahweh hath before ordained that we should walk <laughs> in them. See, we are his workmanship. He's working, working with us. Right. Working with each and every one of us in different ways, but still all of us are going through hell. This is hell. I like, boy, I, I just love it when somebody tells me, go to hell. I say, I'm already there in the physical, but in the spiritual, I'm in heaven in my mind, because I think and know and live according to Yahweh, I'm in heaven, although my physical presence is in hell in this earth plane. Oh, boy, I tell you, these things are just so fantastic. You know, so therefore, we are ordained to walk in them. We're He's ordained us. I wasn't ordained by any man. You weren't ordained by any man. It was through Yahshua the Messiah, through the grace of Yahshua. Read on, please, if you would. Right. 11 verse. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past heathens in the flesh, who called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. See, we're but right. at that time. See, we were all Gentiles. We were all uncircumcised before we came down to class. But when we come to, down to class, now we're being circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. 
It's through the preaching of the gospel. And what that is doing is that is taking the flesh out of our eyes. It's taking the fleshly way of seeing things. It's taking the earthly way of seeing things out of the, out of the way. It's getting the flesh. We are being circumcised and getting the flesh out of our eyes. Thank you. I see that. We are getting the, we are getting the flesh out of our eyes so that we can look into the spirit. Just like that veil had to be taken out of the, of the, between the most holy place and the holy place, that veil had to be written trained when Yahshua was on the cross. Because in the, I haven't got time to get it, but in the Bible it says, stand in the holy place. So therefore now we can stand in the holy place. And when that veil, when you've been circumcised, when that veil has been taken away, you can see directly into the most holy place. And that's what this is about the circumcision. Now we can see Yahweh. We can understand Yahweh. And he's showing us him. He's showing us his face. And when you see the face of Yahweh, you die. But he has quickened us with spiritual life. And that's what we're looking forward to. And this is the change that we're going through. Uh, let's see. Go to 14 and 15, and then I'll be done. Ephesians 2 and 14. For he is our peace who hath made but, for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Yeah, that's what I was talking about there with the tabernacle. Okay, taking that partition out of there so that we can now see Yahweh face to face. Mm -hmm. Read the second uh, 15, please. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinance, for to make in himself of twain one new man. So making peace. So he's abolished in the flesh the enmity. Now, what is enmity to Yahweh? A carnal mind. A carnal mind is enmity. And now that carnal mind has been taken away. And we can see spiritual principles. That was the problem we had. We could see nothing but the flesh. Now, Satan cannot see nothing but the flesh. And that's why you see these preachers on TV preaching. And what are they preaching? Physical prosperity. That if you accept Jesus into your life, you can be financially fit. You can be rich. And you can have the most wonderful wife in the world, and you're going to have the most wonderful children in the world, and everything's just going to be hunky-dory. Well, that's physical. They're teaching physical principles. Money, healing, not healing you from a spiritual standpoint, but healing you from a physical standpoint. Wanting your physical money. Oh boy, do they want your physical money. See, that's what it's all about, power and money. But Yahshua, Yahshua has taken us out of that and given us something a lot better. And uh, I thank you for the time. I thank you for the invite and uh, looking forward to listening to the other two speakers and uh, learning on the chair myself. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chuck Marshall. Oh, yeah. For our second vessel, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Cherie Williams from our Florida Orlando class. Dr. Williams? Good evening, class. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes I can. Good evening. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed the comments of the previous speaker, and I'm always happy and glad to have another, another opportunity to sit under this great divine vision and revelation that our heavenly father, Yahweh Elohim, through Yahshua the Messiah, uh, did receive, let me say that again. I'm happy to be under the great divine vision and revelation that Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley received in the year of 1931. For without this vision and revelation, we wouldn't know anything about Yahweh's divine purpose, 
pattern and plan of salvation from the beginning unto the end. And that's what we're learning down here. And that's what we're teaching down here is the divine vision and revelation that he received in 1931 in Springfield, Ohio. Um, you know, as I was listening to the previous speaker, I had to go back in my mind and remember uh, the state and condition of my heart and mind when I first came to class. I came, I came from a very religious family. My uh, grandmother was a deaconess in the church, and my grandfather was, was a, a deacon in the church. And matter of fact, he was a carpenter, and he helped build the church, the family church in one part, Mount Moriah Baptist Church. He, he put in the baptismal pool behind the pulpit, you know, and then my mother's sister uh, is a mother of a holiness church, and her husband, my uncle Henry, uh, is a bishop of seven holiness churches. So I come from a big churchy family. <laughs> So needless to say, I went to church almost every time they cracked the door, either in, in, in the Baptist church with my parents and grandparents, you know, on my daddy's side, and then on my mother's side, the holiness, you know, uh, going to Sunday school and the whole nine yards. In summertime, going to the, the Bible, uh, what do they call that? The, the Bible camps in the summertime. You, yeah. you understand me? So. Um, but you know what? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the but the end thereof is the ways of death. I, I'm quoting somewhere in Isaiah, I believe it is. Uh, uh, if you find it, you can holler out. I found it, you know. But that's in the scriptures. So now I was Proverbs in the Proverbs 14, 12. Thank you, sweetie. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So now that was the state and condition that I was in, that my family was in. It, it was a way that seemeth right, but it was not the right way, you know. So now we were in church looking for God. Huh? We were in church, you know, uh, uh, especially in the holiness church. What do they call that? Tarian for the Holy Spirit. Repeating yeah. his name, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You know, that's what they call it, you know. But now let's go to the scriptures and see what Yahweh, Elohim Yahshua has to say about that. Let's go over and get Acts 17 and 24 first. And if somebody else can go on over and get for me uh, Second Chronicles 2 and 6. Actually, you can pick up Second Chronicles uh, 2 and 1 first, and then 6, and then, no, two, 2 and 1, and 4 and 6. That's what I need in Chronicles. And Isaiah 66 and 1. Did y'all get that? Second Chronicles, the second chapter, verses 1 and 4 and 6, and also Isaiah 66 and 1. Okay, give me Acts 17, 20 first, 20 at four. Mm -hmm. Okay, Acts 17 and 24. Yahweh that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Elohim of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Hold it right there. Okay, so now it says, Yahweh who made the world and all things therein, dwelleth not in OT in temples made with hands. But my family and I were in the church looking for him. So everybody is at the church, but God himself. Because he said, I don't dwell in temples made with hands. I don't dwell in churches, synagogues, kingdom halls, mosques, whatever, made with hands. He said, I don't dwell there. Mm -hmm. We were there, but he wasn't. You understand what I mean? He don't dwell in temples made with hands. That's not where he dwells. Now, let's go over there and get uh, Chronicles. I tell you what, can you give me Isaiah 66 and 1 first, and then we'll uh, pick up Chronicles, if you don't mind. 
Yes. Okay. Um, I have Isaiah 66 and 1. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thus saith Yahweh, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Very good. Now you see that. Now this is Yahweh himself speaking. He said, now heaven is my throne. And you see it right there on this chart here, the Moses chart, if you can zoom in there. Say, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. He says, where is the place of his rest? And what building? Oh, I'm messing it up. Read it again, honey. But Sure. Thus said Yahweh, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? Hold and it right where, there. Mm -hmm. Hold it right there. Where is the house? That's the question. Since heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool, you see him uh, standing on look like a blue marble. See, it, it's, it's uh, painted on the chart, look kind of small. But you have to picture that that blue marble, that's really the earth. That he, That is his footstool. You get what I mean? So heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you have built for me? You get what I'm saying? Where's the place of my rest, said Yahweh? Because he said, I don't dwell in temples made with hands. Because heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. You understand me? But that's where we were in church looking for him. He said, I don't dwell there. You got Chronicles now? Yes. Um, Second Chronicles 2 and 1. And Solomon determined to build a house for the name of Yahweh and a house uh -oh. for his Hold it right there. He says Solomon was determined to build a house for Yahweh. Is that what it said? Yes. No. It says Solomon was determined to build a house for the name of Yahweh. Right. So, Yahweh, you see that? Yeah. <laughs> see how the vision points things out? Yes, <laughs> he said he was determined to build a house for the name of Yahweh. Because yeah. Solomon... You understand? Oh, my goodness. He realized, because Yahweh showed him, you can't build me no house because the heaven of the heavens can't contain me. You understand what I'm talking about? So you can't build me no house, Solomon. You got to build it for my name. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you guys, if you do some research, you check out that, that uh, temple there. That thing was marvelous. You hear me? It was a saint. It was an oracle a sanctuary and a porch, right? Has to be three, yet one. Proving the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now, we have paint on our houses, right? We got drywall and we got paint on there. How about the inside and outside of this temple was, was paved with pure gold? You get how marvelous it is? Yeah. It had precious stones that was slid into the walls of this temple, such as diamonds and rubies, and I can't name them all. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, emeralds and whatever. You understand? Was slid into that, into the walls of that temple. People find lively stones whom we all are in the body of Yahshua, because he's the true temple. I'm getting ahead of myself. But you see what I'm saying? I'm talking about that natural temple that Solomon built he didn't build it for Yahweh. He built it for his name. See how marvelous his name is? Pure gold and precious stones. You get what I mean? And it's on a greater scale than the tabernacle. Because if you give me the tabernacle for a second. Uh, yes. Thank you. And you look here. You see. Now, in the tabernacle, you got uh, one altar of sacrifice. But there were several in, 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 in the temple. You got this laborers one in the tabernacle, but in the temple, there are several. You get it? You got one uh, in the holy place. Not, what I was just talking about, the altar sacrifice and the labor and all that, that's in the court roundabout open to the element, right? Then when you go through the door into the holy place of the tabernacle, you got that one seven branch candlestick. There was 10 in the temple. It's on a greater scale. And 
you you got one table of showbread here. If my memory don't fail, I believe it was 10 tables too. But you only have one altar of incense in the tabernacle and in the temple. Why it's only one and everything else is on a greater scale? Because Yahweh is the only mediator between us and Yahweh. Only one mediator. You get what I'm saying? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful, you guys. Then you got the Ark of the Covenant in, in the uh, most holy place of this tabernacle. And you only have that one Ark of the Covenant in the temple as well. You understand what I mean? Typifying Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, these three are one. But you see how you have the, uh, the archangels on this uh, 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 Ark of the Covenant here, right? Now, in the temple, you had these huge cherubs or angels that overshadowed the Ark of the Covenant. And their wings span from, from the, the, the wall over the Ark of the Covenant on one side and from the wall over the Ark of the Covenant on the other side. A great big, huge, huge angels. You get, you get what I mean? Gold they were. You see? And uh, so this tabernacle represent the physical body of Yahshua, the Messiah, mm -hmm. right? But the temple represent the spiritual body of Yahshua, the Messiah. But the point I'm trying to make is that Yahweh say, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. And you read somewhere, say, heavens are the heavens can't contain me. What house you going to build for me? You understand me? Because we, we live, move, and have our beings. In Yahweh. Oh, my goodness. Why don't you finish that in Acts where you were there, uh, Dr. Um, you want Chronicles? Whoever was reading that. Uh, okay. No, uh, let me go. Yeah, I do you want, want Chronicles, but let's finish that in Acts. Acts 17 and 25? Yes, ma'am. Can Neither you start 24 again? Read sure. 24 again. Acts 17 and 24. Yahweh that made the world and all things therein seeing that he is Elohim of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temple made with hands. Yes. Neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Read on. And hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and mm -hmm. determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. Mm-hmm. That they should seek Yahweh, if happily they might feel after him and find him. Okay, now that not, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. The first aim is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and as he actually exists, right? To help you find and know him. So now here she's reading, wherein you could seek after him and happily you might find him. And read on. What else about that? Read it again. After him, sure, Acts 17 and 27, that they should seek Yahweh, if happily they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Hold it so right there. Mm -hmm. Hold it right. Thank you, sweetie. For in him, in God, whose name is Yahweh, for in Yahweh, who is pure spirit, you see that cloud going all around the edges of that chart? That's showing forth Yahweh in his pure spirit state. And you notice how everything on the chart is in the cloud. That's teaching us that everything that we could see, and even the invisible things such as cells and germs and whatever else that we can't see, you know what I'm saying? It's all within him within Yahweh, within spirit, within God. We live, move, and have our beings within him. Mm -hmm. you, you get what I'm saying? So not only are we in him, but guess what? He's in us. I didn't call it, but 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Y'all know where I'm going. 1 First, First Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not? That your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Hold the phone. Is... Hold the phone. He said, now he don't dwell in temples made with hands. But then the Holy Spirit through Paul said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple 
of the Holy Spirit or the temple of God, whose name is Yahweh. Your body is the temple right there on your head, on the side of your head. What do they call that? They call that a temple. Hint, hint. He's there. You understand me? So we are in him and he is in us. Just like we live, move, and have our beings in this natural air. But without this air, we can't live. Because we live in the air and what else? And the air lives in us. Teaching us that we live in Yahweh and he lives in us. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So therefore, no, he's not in no building. You are the building where he dwells. And he's been speaking to you all the time. You know, when mama said, you better not go over to so-and-so's house and you sneak and go anyway and you get in trouble and you say, something told me not to go around now. I should have did what mama said. What is that something told me? That's Yahweh right in you, speaking to you all the time in that still, soft voice. But we didn't know that was the great creator speaking to us, leading and guiding us, keeping us out of trouble most of the time. But we ignore the voice and get in trouble. You know what I'm talking about? You see? Okay, now let's go on the Chronicles now. And and, and I, I don't think I'm going to get no further than this, but that's okay. Go ahead, honey. Chronicles. Second Chronicles 2 and 1 and then uh, 4 and then four. 6. Okay, mm -hmm. you want to read one over? Yes, please. Okay, Second Chronicles 2 and 1. And Solomon determined to build a house for the name of Yahweh and a house for his kingdom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop down to the fourth verse. Yes. Behold, I build a house to the name of Yahweh thy Elohim, to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense and for the continuous showbread and for the burnt offerings morning and evening on the Sabbaths and on the new moons and on the solemn feasts of Yahweh our Elohim. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. I'm going to drop down to the sixth six. verse. Mm -hmm. But who is able to build him a house, seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then that I should build him a house, save only to burn sacrifice before him? <laughs> now, you see that? So we just went uh, 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 um, to the, uh, did we go to, the, this is in the prophecy, Chronicles and Isaiah's in the prom, in the uh prophecy but you read i think it's over there in the law too where he talks about how the heaven is my throne and earth is my foot do i can't put my finger right. on it right now but I we know that it. that you found it thank you yeah, it's isaiah um 66 and one mm -hmm. thus said yahweh the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool mm -hmm. where is the house that you build unto me and where is the place of my rest? That's very good. Very good. So you're seeing that M Moses is seeing him. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool right here in his vision. And we gone through the prophecy and showed it to you and went over there in, in the uh, spiritual reality about the fact that he's not in the church. He's in you and we are in him. Okay. All right. So what's the next thing about my church? Okay. So they taught me that I had to join the church, right? And then it said that I had to be water baptized first before I ate the Lord's Supper. That's what they taught me in my church, right? But now you're looking at the Moses chart here. Now, remember the children of Israel were in bondage down in the land of Egypt. And before they could come out of Egypt, they had to have what the world calls the Lord's Supper, but since this divine vision of revelation been taught to us, we have learned that that is the Passover feast because Israel is passing over from bondage unto freedom. They're passing over from darkness into his marvelous light. You get what I'm saying? You see? All right. Back here in the law. So what was on the menu? That's Exodus 12 and 8. Because they had to have a meal. Now, in my church, we had crackers and grape juice. But if you get a strong concordance and you look up crackers and you look up grape juice, that's not in the Bible. From Genesis 1-1, clear over to, to Revelation 22 last. Crackers and grape juice ain't in there. But there is a menu for the Passover feast. You got it? Right. That's, that's the Passover feast. Mm-hmm. 
Exodus 12 and, and, and 1. Um, 12 and 8. 12 and 8. And they shall eat in the flesh in the night, roast with fire. And they shall, shall eat the flesh in the night. Now, I'm trying to cut to the chase because I'm about out of time. That flesh that they're eating is a roasted lamb. They had to take the lamb out on April the 10th. By the way, April is the first month of the year, not January. That's another lecture. But trust me, April is the first month of the year. That's why every April the 1st, they call it April Fool's Day. What is Yahweh saying? It's April Fool, not January. But anyway, moving on. So uh, they had to Dr. take Williams. out the lamb. You got yeah. 15 minutes, baby. Okay, okay. They had to take out the lamb on April the 10th, right? And they had to hold that lamb over to April the 14th. What are they doing to that lamb in those four days? They are examining the lamb, making sure it has no spots, no blemishes, no diseases, and all that. It has to be a perfect lamb, a perfect lamb of the first year. You get what I'm saying? You see, and they had to kill him on the evening of April the 14th, piercing him in the side, draining the blood in a basin and putting a four points of blood on the door down in the land of Egypt inside the house. Now, not outside the house like it was the Cease to be the Mills uh, Ten Commandment movie that we see every every year. Right. Around April, March, April, somewhere in there, they'll play it, right? No, they got they got Joshua running around putting blood on the outside of the door, trying to save his girlfriend. Ay, yeah, yeah. That's Hollywood, you guys. That's not the way it is. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so they had to put the blood on the four points of the door inside the house. They had to eat roasted lamb. Okay, so that's the flesh. They had to eat the flesh that night. And what else is on the menu? Read on. Uh, and they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. All right. So you got roasted lamb. We're talking about the menu. We got unleavened bread. Because don't you like bread with your meat? Yeah. Right? <laughs> and they're drinking bitter herbs, which is juice from green. So you got three things on the menu. Okay, now homework for you guys, when you go in and you read Exodus 12 chapter, you'll find out that they ate this uh, unleavened bread, this roasted lamb, and they drank the bitter herbs, which is the Passover feast, what the world calls the Lord's Supper, and they don't have the menu right. They had to eat it in their houses. They had to eat it in the evening, okay, mm -hmm. all that night. And as they were eating that roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and drinking bitter herbs all that night, the death angel went through the land of Egypt and killed every firstborn of every house that did not have the blood of the lamb on the door. Right? And you read in Exodus that the Egyptians, it wasn't uh, not one house of the Egyptians that didn't have at least one dead. Not just the people, but also their plots, okay? So the firstborn man and beast died that didn't have the blood of the lamb on the door. So this is your institution of the Passover feast in the land of Egypt. So according to Yahweh's purpose, pattern, and plan, they had to suffer first. Then two day, the next morning when they were delivered out of Egypt, they had a two-day journey to the Red Sea. Now. This Red Sea is water. And we read in Exodus, I'm not going to read it right now. Exodus, just write it down and check me out. And if I'm wrong, you come back to class and say, you know that lady, she, she told a fib. You understand what I'm saying? Because I found out thus and so. But in Exodus 12, chapter, you kind of find out 14 and 21 that the children of Israel, they uh, uh, after Moses raised his rod over the Red Sea and they humped up and made a tunnel there, and they were baptized in the cloud and in the sea unto Moses, right? So the point I'm saying, in my church, I had to be baptized first. And then they gave me the Lord's Supper. But that's backwards. According to the purpose and plan of Yahweh, God himself, right? You had to have the supper first and then you get baptized. See how we just had everything wrong? You get what I mean? And when we had the supper in my church, it wasn't in the evening. 
It was in the morning time. And he said, in the house. When I went to church, that wasn't in the house. That was at the church of my joy. But they had it in the house back there in the land of Egypt. You get what I'm saying, y'all? Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. And you had 12 tribes of Israel that had that stuff. You follow me? All right. Now I'm going to run this and then I'll be done. Give me Ezekiel 45, 21 and Ezra 6, 19. Now don't forget, they had this Passover feast in the first month, on the 14th day of the month. They had it in the evening. They had it in their houses. You see? And they had roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and they drank bitter herbs. Don't forget those are the PowerPoints, if you will. All right, so now let's see what it, this is in the law we're reading in Exodus. Now we're going to the prophecy. Go ahead. Ezekiel 45 and 21. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, ye shall have the Passover, a feast of seven days. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. Wow, wow, wow. In the first month. Now we learn something. The first month with Yahweh is, is April. Mm-hmm. In the first month, and it tells you on the 14th day of the first month, that's April the 14th, they shall have the Passover. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. And we just read about the unleavened bread, right? All right. Now go to the next one. You said, uh, what was it, uh, Dr. Williams? Ezekiel 45. Which one did you read, sweetheart, Hanika? Which one was you? I just read Ezekiel 45 and 21. Okay. All right. So let's get Ezra 619. Okay, 619. And Ezra. then the other scripture read, if you can go on over to Matthew 26, and we're going to start at one and we'll wait, we'll work our way down. Go ahead, honey. Ezra 6 and 19. And the children of the captivity prepare the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. Wow. Now you see how it keeps repeating? And repeating and repeating. It says the children of the captivity. Now, you didn't forget that the children of Israel was in bondage to Pharaoh and his host down there for some 430 years. I think that's captivity. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But over here in the prophecy, this is a different captivity. I think it's Babylonian captivity if you do your research. You get it? But the principle is still the same. Manifestation change, but it's still the same principle. There are slaves in Egypt. Over there in Ezra, they're slaves unto the Babylonians. You get it? They're ca- they're in, they're in captivity in Egypt. They're in captivity over here in e- in uh where y'all e- Ezra. You see the children of the captivity. They did what? Prepare the Passover upon the fourteenth day of the first month. Upon the fourteenth day of the first month, which is April the the fourteenth, which is the first month of the year with Yahweh. Very good. All right, so now let's go see. Now, the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, born through the lawns of the Virgin Mary, is to fulfill the law and the prophets, not to set up a Christian example for me and my family to follow. After. That's that's what my preacher taught me, but that's not what he said. Let, ah, yeah, yeah. Let's just get one witness. That's Matthew's uh, 5, 17, and 18, and then we'll go to Matthew, the 26th chapter. Matthew 5, 17, and 18. And it's written in red. These are the words of the Savior. You got it? Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. All right. So the Savior himself said, I come to fulfill the law and the prophets. Fulfill means to complete, finish, and bring to an end. Right? All right. And the law is the first five books of the Bible. He said he came to fulfill the law. That's the first five books of the Bible. The accredited writer being Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He said, I come to fulfill the law and the prophets. The prophets are from Joshua over to Malachi, the next 34 books. Five books of the law, 34 books of the prophecy, making 39 books, which is called the Old Testament. That's why he's pointing there. The so-called Old Testament part of the Bible. That's the law and the prophets that the Savior was born through the lawns of the Virgin Mary to fulfill, to finish, to complete, and bring to an end. 
All right. So now when you go to Matthew 26, 26, now mm -hmm. they told me in the church that Jesus came to set up a Christian example for us to follow after. But now let's read Matthew 26 and 1. We're going to see if he's setting up something. Go ahead. Matthew, you want the Matthew 26 and 1? Yes, please. And it came to pass when Yahshua had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, you know that after two days is a Passover. And okay, son... hold it, hold it right there. All right. Pop quiz. You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. All right. So let's see. What day would that be? We've been talking about April the 14th in the law, April the 14th in the prophecy. Five minutes, mm -hmm. thank you. And now he say. He's talking to the disciples, the Savior. is talking to the disciples. Now, you know that after two days, it's the feast of the Passover. Well, of course they know, because they've been keeping it for some 1,500 years down through the law and the prophecy, or the ages and dispensations of time. They've been keeping it every April the 14th. So this said after two days, it's the feast of the Passover. So what day would this be, class? This mm -hmm. is April the 12th. Wow. Now, when I was in church and read that, I ain't, I didn't know that was April the 12th, did you? No. Uh-uh. We didn't know that. We had to come to school and be taught this vision and revelation. So on April the 12th, he says, you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. You get it? But if he's setting something up, then they should know nothing about it. Y'all understand me? So that shows you he's not setting up no Christian example for us to follow after. He has been born through the lawns of the Virgin Mary and gone into his ministry at the age of 30 to fulfill, to finish, to complete, and bring the law and prophets to an end. That's what he's doing. You get it? Okay. Now drop on down to 17. Okay. Do you want me to finish reading the second verse? Go ahead, sweetie. You yes. know that after two days is a Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Very good. Now, 17. 17. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Yahshua, saying unto him, Where will thou, where, where will thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the rabbi saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with his disciples. At the church of my choice. In the house. Ah, did y'all catch that? So he got to say, we're going to keep the Passover at the man's house. Go to the city and tell the man, we're going to have the Passover in your house. Why the Savior got to say that to his disciples? Because they had it in the house in Egypt. They had it in the house in the prophecy. So when he comes in fulfilling the law and the prophets, they got to have the Passover in the house with his 12 disciples. Why 12 disciples? Because the 12 tribes of Israel, they had it back there in Egypt. You had a man per tribe going down to 20. Twentieth verse. 20th verse. Now, when the evening was come, he sat down with the 12. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Now, when 11 o'clock in the morning come on the first Sunday, is that what it said? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> but that's really? what I did in my church. Every first Sunday, 11 o'clock in the morning, we had the Lord's Supper. But he said, when the evening is come, right. he sat down with the 12. You get it? You guys, and they had it in the evening law and the law and the prophets. You get it? Now yes. go down to 26. We are 26 time. first. And as they were eating, Joshua took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. All but right, I, that's good. That's good right there. So he said now, and as they were eating, Yahshua took the bread. Now Yahshua holding the bread, it's obvious they're not eating that. So what are they eating, class? They're eating the roasted lamb. We know that because of the vision of Revelation pointed out down through the ages and destinations. They're eating the roasted lamb. He's got the bread. 
he's holding it. He's blessing it. And he breaks it and gives it to them. He's not in possession of the bread no more. He said, take, eat. That is my body. Is that what it said? Yeah, no. He took it didn't cup. say, that is my body. He said, this is my body. Pointing to himself. The vision and revelation pointed out that he pointed to himself. This is my body. Not that bread that I gave you. That ain't my body. I'm standing right here. This is my body. Okay. And then he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to the disciples and he said, drink ye some of it and leave some for the Christians. No, <laughs> he said, drink ye all of it for that is my blood. This in the cup. No, he said, this is my blood pointing to himself of the New Testament, not which is going to be shed. He said, which is shed. That's present tense. Because Joshua was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And that spiritual blood that he's talking about is shed is what cleansed us from our sins by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua, the, the Messiah. We have the forgiveness of sin in his spiritual blood. You get it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, two more scriptures. I'm going to sit down. Give me uh, 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 Romans 14, 17. We're talking about the kingdom because that's where we are. But, and and first Corinthians, no, uh, Revelation 3.20. Romans, Romans 14, 14 and 17. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink. Hold it. Mm -hmm. It said the kingdom of Yahweh is not meats and drinks. It's not that no more. Because you see here, he nailed it to his cross. It's not about eating no suppers no more. You get it? But what is it, sweetie? Read on. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Oh, my goodness. The kingdom of Yahweh is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, who is Yahshua the Messiah. He's the Holy Spirit. Revelation 3.20. Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. I will come into him and sup with him. Sup is the root word of supper. And we've been having a supper ever since we've been in class tonight. He's supping with us and we with him. All praises and honor go to Yahweh our Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Hallelujah. 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 And thank you, Dr. Sheree Williams. For our last vessel, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on the president of the North Star Chicago class, Dr. Patrick Latortu. Dr. Latortu. Good evening. Good evening. All those titles, I don't need it. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> oh boy, that the, 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 the previous speakers, I, there's so much to go into. I had to ask Joshua, what you want me to go into? And that's and I, all set up. So now I'm like, okay, get ready. So we, we do have a returning visitor, right? Yes. Okay. Now, yes, we do. Now, now listen, th this is extremely important. This, because see, two things were hit upon. Where Yahshua the Messiah dwells, hearing the voice, passing over from death unto life and because your soul is at stake. Every single soul will see Yahshua the Messiah himself. But see, that's going into another lecture, so I don't want to do that. I want to stick to what was being said. Now, the previous speaker was talking about where Yahweh dwell. See, but you have to see it in the law and the testimony because this is going to point you out. See, this thing is so deep. We're going to begin at Moses. We have to. And where I'm going is how after the children of Israel were delivered out of the land of Egypt and they were resurrected. You know what? I have to go. I have to I have to slow down because I'm about to go like flying. Here's my <laughs> point. OK, here. Here's the point. I want you to go to Exodus 14 and 10. And this is the reason why. 
You need to understand, as if I can give you understanding, I can't. But you need to know that we must be delivered. And there is no other savior that will deliver you. Currently, right now in the world, you got people believing in Jesus Christ. You got Allah, you got Buddha. They're believing in every other imagined imagination that they think is going to deliver. Even from a natural standpoint, every time we get into some daggone presidential election, they think their president is going to save them from this, save them from that, this, that, and the other. Wrong. It's wrong, people. There's only one savior. There's only one creator. And it's being understood now. Everyone is calling on Jesus and this and that, and, and it's not working. If you're going to sit here and be on, have a church on the corner, say, Jesus, can you stop the flood? Did he stop the flood? No. Do you get my point? Is Buddha that big old, big old stomach looking idol sitting around there on the other side of the world? Say, is he stopping anything? No. There's only one that can do anything to, and especially save your soul. This is what Yahweh is looking for. This is what Yahshua came to do, is to save your heart and mind from darkness itself and the power of Satan. But you have to understand this. First of all, before I go really flying, I want the definition of the of, of human body looked up. Say, what does this divine vision in Revelation really mean? Well, first of all, you have a soul. You need to know where your soul is. Well, I know it's in me, but let's read the definition anyway. Get me that in the in the in the in the in the whatever dictionary, and I hope you have an old one. Whatever dictionary you got. What is the human body? Does Jesus Christ didn't resurrect no physical body? And neither will you. Go ahead and look it up. Okay, I have the human it. body in Britannica. Yes, ma'am. Was, okay, human body. The physical substance of the human organism mm -hmm. composed of living cells mm -hmm. and extracellular materials mm -hmm and organized into tissues, organs, and systems. Mm -hmm. Human anatomy and physiology are treated in many different articles. Of course. Um, that, that's not the definition I'm looking for, though. <laughs> okay. Hold the on definition one second. I'm looking for, you may have to go to the dictionary. The because temporary a, abode yeah. of the soul. Say it one more time. The temporary abode of the soul. So that means your physical embodiment is a temporary house. That Where means, was that read from? I'm sorry, Dr. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead. Read it from what? What was the dic what was the dictionary? What's the name? Funkin of it? Wagnalls. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. So this is the reason why. See, why am I living? Why am I here? Why am I? Well, you in a temporary house. You're going to be in it for a little bit, and then you got to leave. Now, now I can get real serious. Now, after the children, now, first of all, read Exodus 14 and 10, and then we'll go from there. Because it says in Hosea, out of Egypt called my one son. So let's go ahead and run that. But I want you to read Exodus 14 and 10 first. That's the first thing I want you to do. Okay. Exodus 14 and 10. Mm -hmm. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. That's and they right. Were, mm -hmm. Go ahead, keep on. Okay. And they were sore afraid, and the mm -hmm. children of Israel cried out unto Yahweh. Yes. And, and they said unto Moses, mm -hmm. because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Mm -mm. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Mm -mm. Is not is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, "Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians"? Now stop right there. Now wasn't Egypt already devastated by Yahweh Himself? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so 
You're going to come up with a statement. He leave me alone. I want to serve e the Egyptians. You see what's happening here? No, nah, mm -hmm. you're coming out. <laughs> I don't care what you say. You coming out. Because why? Yahweh, Yahshua means, well, you, you know what? You better keep, I'm flying too much. Keep reading, please. Keep reading. Exodus 14 and 12. Is not mm -hmm. this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, mm -hmm. let us alone, that we may mm -hmm. serve the Egyptians? Mm -hmm. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the people, fear mm -hmm. ye not, Stand mm. still and see the salvation of Yahweh. Which Stop, he right will there. Mm -hmm. Stop, Stop right there. Stop right there. Now, if you use your migratory trek, and if you understand that there's a tabernacle pattern in operation, and I'm going to do this real fast. Go to the, uh, the, body, the body tabernacle for real quick so we can see that tabernacle real close so the uh, 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 visitor can see this. Now, look, you have one tabernacle, three compartments, seven steps, nine vessels this is what yahweh elohim didn't see i know i'm going fast i know this is what yahweh elohim transformed himself into in a vision to moses atop mount sinai now i got to do this so i can show you where we're at first step being the gate second step being the altar of sin sacrifice brazen third step being the brazen laver fourth step being the door the fifth step being the holy place, the sixth step being the second veil, and the seventh step being the what? Most holy place. Now, I got to do it this way so I can tell you where you're at in this particular part of the migratory trek. This is at the time before the Red Sea opened up. This would be considered the fourth step. The third and fourth step are going to be gone into because you have to go through the divided waters of the what? Red Sea, and you're going through a door. But, and because see, it's Yahweh that opened up the Red Sea, or may I say, Joshua, the son of Nun. Keep reading, please. Where are you at next? 14 and 13. Go and ahead. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand mm -hmm. still and see the salvation of Yahweh, which so he will show right to there. you. Stop, to stop, mm -hmm. stop. I, I gotta mm -hmm. stop you. <laughs> this is what the sons must do each and every individual son you must fear not stand still and see the salvation of yahweh whose name is who yahshua in your heart and in your mind why is that because he's the only savior for your soul period I know the world says his name is Jesus Christ, but that's a bunch of crap because J.E. has come from a Babylonian deity. S.U.S. is coming from Zeus, the supreme deity of the, of the Greeks, and Christ is coming from Krishna, a Hindu idol sun god. You got a triology of, uh, of names, of, of meaning of name for that one name. What you doing with three gods doing in one name? That's not who Yahweh is. Yahweh say he's a unity. He's not a trinity, and trinity is not even in your Bible. Go ahead, keep reading. Now you can read the rest. Okay. Um, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will show to you today. Mm -hmm. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye yeah. shall see them again no more forever. Oh, that's right. Read. Yahweh shall fight for you. What you say? He, mm -hmm, Yahweh shall fight for you. Did he tell you to pick up a weapon? Mm -mm. Did he tell you to do anything? He said, Yahweh will fight for you. Read. And ye shall hold your peace. In other words, you will shut up. <laughs> That's what it says. And you will hold your peace. We heard you run your mouth. Now be quiet. Now keep reading. Fifth, uh, four, 15th verse. And Go Yahweh ahead. said unto Moses, mm. Wherefore criest thou unto me? Eesh. Speak unto the children of Israel mm -hmm. that they, excuse me, that they go forward. Mm -hmm. But lift thou up thy rod mm -hmm. and stretch out thine hand over the Eesh. sea yeah. and divide it. Yeah. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the yeah. midst of the sea. 
You see that? Read. Now, hold that, hold that mm -hmm, thought for a mm -hmm. moment. Now go over to 1 Corinthians 10 and 1 real fast, 10 to 1 through 4. Because see, and you reading your King James version, it's going to say Christ was back there. They don't preach that. But truly, it was Yahshua the Messiah because they got the wrong name in there. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4. Then I'll get to my point. There's like two First, things I need to run. Go ahead. Read. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Do you want it out of the King James or you? I've got the holy name. You want it out of the King James? Okay. Go, go, go ahead with the King James first. The first of the visitor needs to see because it's in the book. And you're going to say, you mean Christ was back there 1,500 years ago? Go ahead. Read. All right. Let me pull it up. Bear with me. I have it. Okay. Thank you, baby. You welcome. First Corinthians 10 and one. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I would mm -hmm. not that ye should be ignorant mm -hmm. how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea mm -hmm. and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea mm -hmm. and did all eat the same spiritual meat mm -hmm. and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that what? rock that, was you Yahshua. Know, that's a, that, okay, that's a that's that that see, this is why we know the vision corrects the virgin. Christ didn't follow nobody. He was led, he led them out. Just as just as Yahshua the Messiah led those spirits that believed in him in Matthew 27, 51, 52, from Adam all the way down. You understand what I'm saying? In his resurrection. You understand? So in this resurrection or type and shadow thereof, he led the children of Israel out of the land of what? Egypt. You understand what's being said? Go ahead. Finish. finish. And that, that, that led them. And that rock yep. was who? Christ, as it says in the King James Version. But in the Holy Name Version, that it was that rock that led them. And that rock was Yahshua, the Messiah. Now, I'm now I had to establish that because we got to let you know who is the resurrection? And I think there's somewhere in the fulfillment where he was about to resurrect Lazarus out of the grave, where he says, I am the what? Resurrection and the what? And the life. So what are we saying to you? That only Yahshua the Messiah can give you what? Life. Nothing else. Just as, oh boy, this, we're getting into so, so, many, so many deep things. Okay, now I got to do that. I got to run this real quick. Now, the reason why I have to run is because I'm going to do this by the pattern, see that when they got to the that when they got to the mount, fifty days, uh, you know, fifty days, because we meant they went to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea, see, and then fifty days later, this is where Yahweh Himself spoke His law down, because they got to the mount June the third, but then Mo Yahweh told Moses to tell the children of Israel to wash up and clean up, but on the third day He will speak His law down into the what children of Israel's what hearing. That means every single Israelite heard the law. Everyone. Type and shout of what? This is why the previous speaker got into the voice. You understand what's being said? Because you're made in the image and likeness of your creator, who's Yahweh Elohim himself, made by a pattern. Just as we said that you have one pattern, three compartments, seven steps, nine vessels. Do you know that in your physical embodiment, you have, you, you are one person? Because if he was a trinity, I should be seeing three heads or three chests or three stomachs. And actually, I should be seeing three of you. And don't get into the me, myself, and I, because that's not three of you. You understand? See? But you're made in the image and likeness of Yahweh Elohim himself. You understand? He had a head cavity, chest cavity, abdominal cavity, spiritually and psychologically, which means you have a head cavity, chest cavity, and what? Abdominal cavity. That's in your physical embodiment. Man is made up what? Spirit, soul, body. Three compartments, but one spirit, one unity. You understand what I'm saying? You have one embodiment. Those nine vessels that you have in there, you understand, are typifying the what? Nine divine attributes, which happens to make up your what? Soul. You understand what I'm saying? And there's only one of you because you only got one soul. There's only one trap. Get my point? See, and guess what? As you, as, 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 as your mother and father came together and you were conceived in your mother's womb, it took nine months for you to develop and come out of your mother's womb to be developed as a what? Baby. What does that mean? That as the children of Israel brought up the stuffs 
out of the land of Egypt. And you go over to the 25th chapter of Exodus, Exodus 25, 8, 9, 40, called Chronicles 20, 28, 19. And then you sit here and you go over to what? Hebrews 8 and 5. You understand what I'm saying? And you are made by a what? Pattern. Say, you understand? And see, we didn't even talk about, oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna slow down. Let me slow down. Now, here's my point. Go to Exodus 24, 9 and 10 first, because they all, see, there's so much in here. Because, see, they all saw the God of Israel, more correctly, the Elohim of Israel. When they go over to John 1, 18, when they say, no man has seen God at any time. But then you go back into Exodus and find out 74 people saw him at the same time. Give me Exodus 24, 9 and 10, please. I know I'm skipping stuff. Go ahead. Exodus 24 and uh, 8, 9. Read. Uh, 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw yeah. the Elohim of Israel. And, and they, they were, saw the Elohim of Israel, what he looked like. Right. And there were under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Oh, as so it we were, got feet. Okay, yeah. now look at yours. Oh, you got feet? Mm -hmm. All right then, go ahead, read. Uh, and, and they saw the Elohim of Israel, and there were under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, mm -hmm. and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. Do you have a body? Yeah. Go ahead and deny yourself. I can't wait for someone to say, no, I don't have one. No, you ain't going to say that. See? Now, I'm not going back to Genesis 126, where it says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. There's so much to run. So they saw him, huh? Yes, they all did in a, vi in a divine vision and revelation. Not just a vision. They saw him in a divine vision because he's, he's the divine what? He's the divine one. And he told them Stay up there, you understand? And when you go over to Genesis 24, 16, and after he told Moses to go up there, you understand? And his minister, Joshua, you understand? That's why you need a minister in your what? Heart and mind to show you the things that Yahweh has made, you understand? And that is through Yahshua the Messiah. For it says in John 14, 26, but the comforter who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall what? Teach you all things. And what? Bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever. I said unto you. That's what he said. That means he can talk to you. Did you know that? See, I'm about to run two things at the same time. So get ready. So now after the children of Israel brought up those stuffs in Exodus 25th chapter 8, 9, and 40. Get the pattern scriptures, please. I don't got time. I really don't. Go ahead. Okay, I got it. Exodus 25 and 8, 9. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. That I may dwell among them. Read. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. 25 and 40. Go ahead. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown thee in the mount. The all right. Give me, yeah, give me Hebrews and give me Chronicles. Read. Uh, Hebrews 8 and 5. 8 and 5. Um, I have it. All right. Thank you. Right. Okay. Hebrews 8 and 5. Mm -hmm. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Yes. Read. As Moses was admonished of Yahweh when he was about to make the tabernacle. Yes. For see, saith he, that mm -hmm. thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Did you know that you go by the pattern? Oh, boy, this is getting too deep now. Give me Chronicles 2898. There's so much in my head. I don't know what's going to be coming out. So get ready. Go ahead. Chronicles. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> first go ahead. Come on. First Chronicles uh, 28, uh, really six, but I'll start at. Uh, I just want to say that, that when, he, when, 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 he, when, when he showed David, you understand? And he showed me with his hand upon me. You get my point? See, if you're going to understand anything, in this gospel, in this divine vision and revelation, he has to put his hand upon you so you may see how the things work according to the what? Tabernacle pattern. You understand? That's why you must keep your eye on the pattern, which is who? Yahshua the Messiah. You got it. 
Uh, okay, first Chronicles. It's the 19th verse. And 19. Yeah. All this said David, Yahweh made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even yeah. all of the works of this battle. Now, you see, this is why the previous speaker brought up the temple in the first place, because the plan was given to David, but the execution of building the temple was given to Solomon. And did you know that Solomon means peace? That's another story. So anyway, so after the children of Israel received the law and then they made that golden calf, they had to make a what? They had to make a tabernacle under Yahweh that he may dwell among them. You understand what I'm saying? Now you may go to Exodus 4033, where Moses finished the work. <laughs> Did you hear the first speaker that we're all a work? I'm telling you, we, we are we are work. I'm telling you right now. Whoa, I can't go to Hebekah, but I don't want to do that right now. Give me Exodus 40 and 33. There's too Exodus. much stuff going on in my head. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Exodus 40 and 33. Read. And he reared up the court round about, the yeah. tabernacle and the altar, and yeah. set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. So he finished the work. Just as Yahshua the Messiah, he was on that cross and he said, it is finished. Not his life, but he finished doing what? Finishing the law and the testimony. You understand? And then he gave up the ghost and then they uh, put him up, uh, put a spear in his side and out came out what? Blood and water. Do you understand? He, mo oh boy. So, when that work was finished, the 34th verse, please. Exodus 40 and 34. Then yes. a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. Oh, uh -oh. the cloud represents Yahweh. Read. And the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Don't you see the type and shadow of the father and the son? The cloud covered it and the glory what? Filled it. That is why you can sup with the Father and the Son in Revelation 3 and 20, because the cloud is covered, and now the glory, what, filled it. And what happened? Read. And, and Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Did you hear what he, did you hear what he said? Did you hear what the scripture said? Moses was not able to enter in. Read. Moses and Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation That's because it. the cloud abode thereon. Yeah. And, the, mm -hmm. and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. That means you're not going to be taking any man's concept in your heart and in your mind once the Holy Spirit has manifested his, himself in your heart and in your mind. That means he has to reveal himself to you. Get my point. Give me 1 Kings 8 and 11, please. Okay. Uh, 1 Kings mm -hmm. 8 and 11. Read. Okay, 1 Kings 8 and 11. Yes. So that the priest could not stand. To oh, no, you got it. You got to go up, go up. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, five, try try five. nine. Try okay. Nine. First King eight and nine. Please. There was nothing in the ark save, save the two tables of stone, which Moses put there at Horeb, when Yahweh made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. And Please. it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of Yahweh. That the so cloud that the priests, filled the house, that filled the house of Yahweh. Remember that house was built for his what? Name. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at your physical embodiment, you got nothing but wires running all over the place. Your veins and arteries, nothing but the why. Look at your hand. You got wires written in your hand. You understand? Even the name of Yahweh is written on your face. You understand what I'm saying? But see, when we're talking about the glory of Yahweh, we are talking about Yahshua the Messiah now because he has to be in you because everyone is breathing his name. <sighs> That's Psalms 150 and 6. But see, we're talking about the glory of Yahweh now. Who is Yahshua the Messiah? And everybody doesn't have that. Get that understood. 
finish that first Kings 8 and 11. I told you I don't got time. Go okay. ahead. Please. And so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of Yahweh yes. and fill the house of Yahweh. Yes. Now, get coined with that thought. Now, you know, Yahshua the Messiah was manifested and you saw that spirit come down after he was baptized under John. Uh, 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 and then that cloud, that cloud came and then that dove came down and, and settled upon him. Uh, and it, it appeared as a dove and it settled upon itself on Yahshua. And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. And that was for John to identify the Messiah. Who is about to enter into his ministry and fulfill the what? The law and the testimony. What is the reality? This is what we're trying to get you across. You have an opportunity to know your creator as he really is and actually exists. Why? Because in June the 6th, AD 34, when the when the 120 met in the upper room, then came a clap, then came a sound coming from heaven as a what? Mushing, rushing mighty wind. And it, what did it do? What did it do? You better be in that second chapter. I'm serious. It, I ain't filled, it filled the tabernacle. And uh, Dr. LaTorte, you have five minutes. God dog it. I got five. I told you I was going to do this stuff. Go ahead, read. Come on. All right. I finished and it at 11. Go ahead. So that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory yeah. of Yahweh had filled the house of Yahweh. Now go to the second chapter of Acts and go to Acts 10 44. Acts 10 and 44. Yes, please. While Peter yet spake these words. What was the Peter whole... speaking? Wait mm -hmm. a minute. What was Peter speaking? We uh oh, we forgot. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he what? rose again according to the scriptures see what you're dealing with people when you use your tabernacle pattern when you look at the court roundabout you're seeing a death a burial and a what resurrection someone get out the elohim book and look and look up the definition of the word resurrection in the glossary i know i don't got time you understand but everything on this earth plane must go through a death a burial and a resurrection. Don't you understand? People, people are going through earthquakes. You remember the fire in Hawaii? And all those people died and they were buried. You understand? But there was, there is a resurrection. You understand? Because there were people that were saved from it. You understand? Now, let's look at it this way. Don't you have a sunset? Didn't you see one tonight? Didn't you see a sunset? That's likened unto a death. Apparently a buried under the horizon. And then you see what? The sun rise the next morning when if you allow to, if Yahweh allows you to see a resurrection and you ascend your day. And then you think about, dang it, I got to go to work. Uh-oh, that's a death. You buried in that work for as many hours that you are have to do. And then you come out of there resurrected. And what you want to do, you want to go home. Oh, boy, you want to go Oh, don't get me started. You understand what I'm saying? Then you sit here, you go and go and take a bath. Why? Because you stink. That's a death. Then you bury yourself in the water. Then you see that you look clean and you smell clean. Don't you understand? That's a resurrection. Then you put on some clothes because you're naked. Then you put on some clothes so your, clo so your body is buried in some clothes. And then you go ahead and resurrect according to your day. And then when you get home, you change clothes again because now you want to go in your sleep clothes instead of you don't wear your work clothes in your bed, do you? Don't make no sense. You understand? Or else that you have a car and it's dead. You turn the key. Now you hear it coming to life and it's rumbling. You understand? It was buried in your garage. When you opened up your garage door, you sit here and you start to travel. That's a resurrection. People, you go through a death, burial, resurrection every daggone time of every day. And you didn't even know that until he called you in the class and said, did you know you're going by a pattern? Right. Do you see? Do you see how important this is? You have a family member dead and gone. You understand? And and then you go to the funeral, and all you're looking at is the physical body. Where did the soul go? Souls out. 
Soul's gone. It resurrected out of that physical embodiment. What does all this mean unto you? That spiritually and psychologically, see, to be currently minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. We want you to talk to your creator, whose name is Yahshua. We want you to communicate with him because he's the only one that's going to lead and guide you out of death hell and the grave so that you may be resurrected under in his name unto life and peace for the kingdom of Yahweh is not me but is but the Romans 14 17 please oh man you know I'm about that I can't even I can't get everything out go ahead Romans because it's because what the kingdom of Yahweh is peace joy and what righteousness in the Holy Spirit get my point did I quote that right I don't know if I did that or right did Romans. I do that right 14 and 17 for the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but righteousness yes. and peace and joy in the Holy yes. Spirit. And then I want you to get one more thing and see, get, see, get one more thing that seeing that you are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin, which so what easily besets us and let's run with patience. Uh, looking under who? Yahshua, the author and finish of our faith. Hebrews 12 Better get and, uh, and 1. Uh, this is wherefore. what you're supposed to be looking at. You ain't supposed to be looking at us. You're supposed to be looking at what? Him. Read. Hebrews 12 and 1. Yes. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, Read. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us, Doubt and depression, yeah. anxiety, all that laid aside. Go ahead, read. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahshua. No, the looking author, under Dr. Kenley. Uh -uh, looking under Dr. Kenley. Yahshua, the what? author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto your pastor. Nope. Yashua. Looking on, looking under any state dean, looking under any dean, any president, any officer, no officer, whoever you made your favorite speaker, who are you supposed to be looking on to? The Holy Spirit, Yashua. Read, read. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Yeah. Lest you be weary and faint. <laughs> yeah, Lest you mind. be weary and faint. Read. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Yes. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastising. And we I all know. had to be, I can't read everything. We all had to be chastised for what we previously believed in. But through his love and mercy and kindness, don't you understand? He's causing you to see him where? In you. This is why we tell everybody, look hear that small, still voice in your heart and in your mind. Make sure it's him. Yahshua, are you really here? Do you understand? And he will manifest himself if you sincerely want to know who he is and how he operates in you. And he will lead and guide you daily. Why? Because he's saving those attributes that happen to be. That is what makes up your soul. He ain't saving no physical body. You're leaving that. But he's saving those attributes or your soul that you may glorify him where? In what? spirit and in truth that is the whole point and that was john 14 23 24 because we didn't know who we worship now you know who you worship get my point so how many minutes i got 30 seconds no over baby <laughs> <laughs> Well, we didn't, right, but we, you didn't see the sign, so we knew no, you would see the second. It's nine. Oh, you out of time. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, all I ask is all honor, praise, and glory go unto Yahweh Elohim through His Son Yahshua the Messiah. I mean that sincerely. And so, with these few words, I say Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, and thank you, Doctor Patrick Latortu. It was a beautiful class tonight. Now, at this time, the Charlotte, North Carolina Bible class would like to thank all of our visitors, brothers, and friends for taking the time out to come and study with us and hope that you will come back and study with us again. Our class is held every Monday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And our SoundCloud tape is every third Monday of each month. 
Zoom participants, please remain muted until the host has ended our YouTube broadcast, I'm sorry. And I would like to thank our visitor, returning visitor Pam for coming back to study with us. And we also have um, time if you can stay and have any questions for anyone who ever have questions. Mm -hmm. They may um, stay over and ask the questions and um, we appreciate it. Thank you. Our, okay, our doxology is, take, doxology is taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him who that is able to keep you from falling mm -hmm. and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign, be long glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let everyone say, hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.